Hi, my name's Connor, and in this video, I'll be showing you how to get the most out of your phone camera while on the go. I'll be giving tips on editing your photos, using your phone camera, and how to fix common mistakes. This video is for people with an interest in photography, but have limits on equipment or for people who like to take photos while traveling. Usually your phone camera will focus by itself, but what if it's having a hard time trying to do so? Well, by tapping on your screen, this can help direct it to what you want it to focus on. In these examples, I focus on the plant and then the background and then on the rock and then towards the sea. And you can see here that this can create two very different photos. Photoshop Express is a free mobile app for iOS and Android devices. When you enter the app, tap on the photo you want to edit, and this will bring you to this page. One feature of the app you must know is the undo and redo buttons. These can be found on the left of your screen, and this can be used to undo or redo any edit you've made to your photo. Another good feature is this button in the top right corner. This button allows you to preview the original version of your photo, so you can check if you like the changes that you're making. Cropping is used to adjust the size or aspect ratio of a photograph. You can use this to cut out anything unwanted in your photos. There are many pre-built sizes or aspect ratios already in Photoshop Express. Some can specifically help you with social medias like Instagram and Facebook. Under the rotate section, you can rotate your photo right, left, you can flip it horizontally and you can flip it vertically. Sometimes you might take a photo at a bad angle without noticing it, but you can fix this by rotating your photo to make it straight again. Next up is lighting. Lighting is a very important tool in photography. It is what creates mood and atmosphere, tone and gives depth to your photo as with bad lighting the picture can look flat and 2D. To adjust the lighting there are six options. Exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites and blacks. These can be adjusted by using the slider to increase or decrease the intensity of each. Let's start with exposure, which is the process of making a photo as light or dark as you want it. Contrast is the range of brightness from lightest to darkest in an image. If you put the contrast too high, it will have very bright highlights and very dark shadows. Highlights are the lightest parts of an image. If you want a certain aspect of your photo to stand out, you can increase the highlights. If you decrease the highlights, then it allows to recover lost details which have been wiped out by too much brightness. Shadows are the darkest area of a photo where you can still see detail. You could increase the shadow if you want to black out an area and focus on the lighter parts of a photo. Whites are the brightest areas in a photo with no color or detail. You can lower the whites if you want more detail to appear in the photo. At the other end of the scale, blacks are areas where there is no detail at all, just pitch blackness. Color is one of the most important elements of photography. It affects everything from the composition and visual appeal of a photo to getting the attention of the viewer and eliciting an emotional response. There are four options for adjusting the color in the photo. The first of these is temperature. Color temperature measures the hue of a light source, ranging from very cool blue to very warm yellows. The color temperature tool can add blue and yellow colors to a picture depending on the atmosphere you want to create with your shot. The tint option adjusts the color of a photo, adding either magenta or green hues. By adjusting the vibrance of a photo, you can increase the intensity of muted colors while leaving saturated colors as they were. It mostly ignores the warmer colors and prioritizes the cooler shades. When we work with saturation, this is to adjust the depth and intensity of the colors in an image. If you reduce the saturation, the colors become muted and fade, but if you want brighter colors, you can boost the saturation. Next up is color mix. Color mix allows you to have more control over what colors you are editing 
in your photo. It allows you to choose between eight different colors and allows you to change the hue, saturation, and luminance of the colors individually. So for example, when I select orange, it changes the hue of all the orange shades in the photo. Next up is saturation. For this, I selected yellow. Because of the yellow sunlight, this was the most common shade in the photo, so this created the most drastic change out of all the colors. And finally, we move on to luminance. For this, I chose the cyan blue color. And by adjusting the slider, I can change how bright or dark the color is. Finally, let's look at solving some common problems you may face. The first setting that may help you improve your image is clarity. This is most commonly used to enhance texture in the image. By increasing clarity, you can sharpen your photo for a clearer final image. This can help if your photo is slightly out of focus. High clarity is especially effective for landscape photography. The sharpen adjustment improves an image by making edges crisper and better defined. But be careful as over sharpening a photo can give it a grainy look. The tool to reduce lumen noise is useful in helping to keep an image's original colour while removing any noise that is visible. The colour noise tool is used to reduce bright green, pink, red and blue pixels that occur in dark spots in a photo. The next thing I'm going to be talking about is the smooth brush. You can change the size of the brush, the opacity of it and feather the edges. People would usually use this brush to smooth out faces but i like to use it to smooth out areas in photos that might be pixelated as it is common for photos that are taken by a phone camera to be pixelated next thing i'm going to talk about is the hill brush you can use this to remove any unwanted objects or blemishes from your photo. All you need to do is use the brush on the object and then it will usually go away. Sometimes it doesn't work correctly, like with this crow, and it usually doesn't work on larger objects. But this brush can be very helpful when wanting to remove a small thing from your photograph. 